What's up, everyone? Welcome to Moments with the Marcelins. My name is June. And my name is Stephanie. It is New Year's Eve Eve. We are on the brink of a new year. I know. How do you feel about that? I mean, I feel like it's crazy that it's gone by so fast. Mm -hmm. And so much has happened in a year that if, like last year feels like five years ago, too. It <laughs> really does. It doesn't feel like it was just last year, but it, it honestly flew by. Like it was just March yesterday <laughs> like it's, it's what it feels like too yes and no i feel like there's moments where i'm like oh man that happened that seemed like yesterday but then there's other parts of this year that i'm like wow we're still here like that happened this year like yeah. everything was just so long ago it feels yeah and it seems like a very <laughs> like a very long weekend i've heard some people say mm. um but in particular, in, in this particular episode, we just kind of want to talk about this year and review what we gained from it, our insight, mm -hmm. and uh, just share. So many times when we look back over a year, we kind of categorize the year by all the negative things that happened in our lives. Or highlights. Or the best things that happened in our lives, yeah. And um, But so oftentimes we also remember like all the bad things. And we were kind of being mindful, you know, talking through and like thinking through what we're going to share just because we don't want it to all just be like all the bad things that happened you know what I mean like in our own lives there's even little blessings that we have to count and I agree with that because like you stated when we look at a year in review we we point out the highlights rarely do we look at things uh from the increments of it and mm -hmm. so sometimes it's hard to because we get so caught up to notice God in the mundane, the very, the everyday, yeah, the, the everyday, seeing God in the everyday. And so we want to see God in the highlights and the miracles mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But we need to be mindful also to see him in the mundane. So one of the first things that obviously happened, like significantly, a lot of things have happened, but that I think has, still has a huge effect right now is, you know, COVID-19. So COVID-19 came to the U.S. and... You know, there was a lot of questions, a lot of conspiracies, a lot of a lot of unknowns, you know. Um, and so with that, obviously, came the shutdown. And for me, I think one of the lessons that that taught me was that it's OK to take a break and to slow down. It didn't feel like that for me at the beginning because um, I currently work in healthcare, So obviously we got really busy. But what I mean is that I have to I learned how to turn it on and turn it off mm. because you know for anyone who works you know that's not a you know self-employed or anything like that like you know you're working for our, someone else and their demands and what they want and what they need at that moment urgent important you know whatever and it was never ending mm. and so i felt like this year was the year that i learned okay this is the moment where i'm gonna start it and this is the moment that i'm gonna stop it because there were so many other things that required my attention you know what I mean? Like emotionally and mentally and just the world and family and, you know, just concerns. And I, you know what I mean? I, I can only dedicate this much time to this because other things also require my attention as well. Um, and I, you know, need time for myself too, you mm -hmm. know? So being able to, to put that and be okay with that, because sometimes we feel like we always have to be productive, but you're being productive in rest too. Mm. So I learned that this year, um, and I feel like I knew that before, but it wasn't until I was put in a position where I literally felt like I was going crazy. I was oh, super overwhelmed, not just like necessarily with work, but just like, again, everything's, you know, you have so many questions. You're trying to process so much. You're shifting, you're changing. Um, we had moved to a new city. We were getting acquainted. There was so much during that time that I was like, hold on, if I don't like, pause and like stop and learn how to have um and organize my day and have that time management <laughs> this is literally going to like take over my life so um I feel like that was a huge lesson that I learned this year especially when it came to that what was something you learned during that time or within you know the season with COVID when it first the news first came about it I'll be first to admit that I didn't understand the seriousness of it. Mm -hmm. And then once everything shut down, I was like, okay, this is something serious. Like, yeah. 
I know this may sound crazy, but <laughs> when the NBA stopped, when, the, when you know, everything just kind of stopped. Yeah. I was like, okay, let me really turn my antennas up, you know? And so for me, I was just like, at first it was one of those things where it's like, okay, this is just uh, going to be a long weekend, two, three weeks maybe. But then you started seeing the seriousness of this and like, we were going to be shut down for a while mm-hmm. and we didn't have a time frame. And for me personally, at first it was kind of cool. Okay, I can work from home, hybrid, you know. Then I started noticing my mood changes, being home all the time. Mm, what was that like? I just started feeling these feelings and I'm just like, okay, where is this coming from? Why am I feeling down? Why am I feeling sad? Mm. Why are, are events that happened in my past that I thought I was over coming to mind? And it's for the first time where, in a long time where, I was literally forced to just stop and face and deal with my emotions, to deal with my trauma. Yeah. And I, for so long, hid behind the business. I hid mm. behind, you know, ministry. I hid behind spending time with friends and family members. I used God to run from God. Mm-hmm. And this is the mm. first time where I'm not able to go out I'm not able to really hang out. I can't hang out with anybody. I'm 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 with you and I'm with our puppy Kobe. Yeah. You know? And you can't compartmentalize it anymore. I can't compartmentalize it. Mm. And that's what I would do oftentimes. And while that might be a good mechanism in some arenas, that's not gonna get you long term full spiritual development that God <laughs> yeah, wants yeah, you yeah. to have. And so I'm dealing with these different types of emotions and I'm like, oh my God, and I don't wanna face it. Yeah. I don't want to face it. I, I'm just mm. like, uh, just can we just not? Mm. And so I, I I made the choice. You know what? Like there are some things that I have to deal with. There are some things that I have to face. And I began to start allowing God to just work inside of me. And, you know, I was more intentional with reading of scripture. I was more intentional with reading of books. I was more intentional on meditating. Mm-hmm. meditating and quiet time. just the quiet time, the stillness and just hearing God, not, not saying a word. And, and anyone who knows me, I love to talk and I love to, <laughs> you know, I love to listen to, I'm a great listener, but <laughs> I love to, you know, just engage. And this was that first time where I'm just like, no, like you have to really meditate. And so for me, that was one of those things where it was like, it was so helpful and I'm thankful for that. Mm -hmm. I also learned the importance of Sabbath, the importance of resting, you know, out of all the commandments, man, when we think about the Sabbath, it's probably the most just skipped over commandments. Like we just, it's crazy how we just move, move, move. And, and society tells us if you don't, if you sleep or if you sleep, you don't eat. And it's just like, this is so contrary to scripture. And, you know, God himself specifically rested on the seventh day Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and, Jesus, at the highest points in his ministry, he would leave to a secluded place and rest. Mm -hmm. Yet, why aren't we doing it? Yeah. Who are we? And so I learned the importance because we hear about Sabbath, but to actually practice it. This was this was that year. I was like, okay, let's really put this thing into action. And so, you know, the benefit of the time that I was given this year that normally I probably would not have had had it not been to COVID helped a lot. Because it helped with my meditation, my just my overall relationship with God, reading of scripture, reading of books, and just dealing and doing some internal reflection and, and allowing God to really just work inside of me as an individual. Like the psalmist says in 130, 139, you know, examine my heart, see if there's any offensive way in me and lead me into the everlasting way. And so that's been a daily process. Am I where I want to be in totality? No, but I am. Uh, a better individual and I, I feel like I, I'm I've I've grown much more than where I was earlier this year yeah what was another pivotal point this year that you feel that you know was life-changing along with that starting this podcast mm, yeah <laughs> like I would honestly say that because this is something that we have been wanting to do for years literally since like 2017 <laughs> I'll probably say for me even earlier yeah and, uh, I think that's when I got into podcasts, probably like 2017, 2016, 2017. So. Yeah. So I, I have been wanting to do this for such a long time. Yeah. And I thank God for you because you're the one who gave me the extra push. <laughs> yeah. COVID also helped. 
And it was like, wow, we're finally doing one of those things that we've been wanting to do. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm thankful for it because, you know, we have this platform now where we're literally reaching people. And, you know, we're sharing the truth of God on a different type of platform. And people that have reached back out to us and tell us how they've been blessed. And it's still amazing sometimes when you hear that. Mm-hmm. And I know that I'm doing God's work. Yeah. I'm doing God's work on a different level. And I'm I'm using the technology of the time <laughs> to reach people and to just express my heart and to let people, you know, a little bit into our lives and show people that, hey, we're human beings. We don't have it all together. We don't have it all right. But the little that we do know, hey, we want to help. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's that's definitely been a um, such a reward. I think um, for me, it kind of ties into like something else that I feel like I learned this year was practicing self-care and you might be like self-care in a podcast yeah self-care because you're doing something that you enjoy Mm -hmm. and you're doing something that you love and um you know you for those that know us you know we do we've done ministries from the jump together and um you know we just love to share you know what i mean god's truth and you know, share from our life and our experiences and just, again, being transparent and, you know, open and giving tools and resources, you know, so that way other people don't have to walk through the same things that we walk through in life. And so, um, you know, just sharing from what God has done in our lives. So I think all of that, you know, has been so important and I cherish that. And so being able to do that this year has honestly been so rewarding um, you know, and again, just giving out of what God, you know, what God has done in your life and what, you know, he's entrusted us mm-hmm. during this entire time. Something else that really stood out this year was the social unrest that had taken place due to the uh, murder of Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, George Floyd, and so many others that may not necessarily have made the, the nas- headlines. national yeah. headlines. And while all of this is happening... We're all waiting to see what the church is doing about it. And I think overall, we failed. Mm. Overall, as a church, I believe we failed because there was so much division amongst the church. And when you just read scripture and you think about the two commandments that Jesus left with us, love your God and love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. If we were to simply just follow these two commandments... It's not that hard. It's not that difficult to understand and to realize. But for some people, it was so challenging and it was so difficult to talk about, to address, Mm -hmm. to be silent on. And then we were able to see that. I don't know, at least for me, I was able to see, wow, we really have a long way to go as a church. Because as a church, we're supposed to be the one that the world turns to in times like this, in moments mm-hmm. like this, mm-hmm. because we have the light. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like overall, we really miss that. Mm. Am I hopeful that it can get better? Absolutely. But yeah. it does. And it is going to take a lot of work mm-hmm. and understanding and sitting down and really reevaluating. How is it that we teach scriptures do we teach it through the lens of jesus or do we teach it from our own lens our own cultural lens or our own cultural yeah. lens mm-hmm. and we also need to learn the importance of listening and empathizing yeah listening and empathizing and that was one of the things that i took away when i think about all these events that have taken place yeah absolutely i think you know this uh what happened during the summer and honestly what continues to happen you know um you know you're you're gonna have feelings and emotions that are gonna come to the surface you know you're gonna be upset maybe angry frustrated you know overwhelmed um and i think those feelings are okay you know um i completely agree with you that it could have been done better and that is like our commitment, you know what I mean, to that, especially with people who want to have conversations um, about racial injustice and different things like that. Um, And sometimes just going back to the basic, some of the basic, you know, stories and parables in the Bible, you know, you have the Good Samaritan. Jesus didn't just say that just because to say that. There was racial tension between those two people groups. 
And yet there was still, you know, the empathy that was shown and the restoration of the person's not only, uh, you know, because of what he had lost, like, you know, his inability to walk and provide for himself and everything like that, but just, you know, what could have happened in that story. And then also the story of the woman at the well. She was a Samaritan as well. And he went out for out to the least of these, you know? So just the fact that he taught that and he shared that and that people are willing to talk about it even more now, I think, and, you know... And bring that topic to the table and be like, what can I do? And what is my part to play in that? There is hope in that. You know, there's hope in that. Is it where I want it to be? No. You know, but something that we always share is like, you know, I'm not going to let my frustrations exceed my hope. You know, is it frustrating? Yes. Yes, it is. It's very frustrating. You know, is it scary sometimes? Yeah. Yes, it is. And I'll be the first to say it. I'm married to a black man in America. Sometimes that's a scary thought. But I am hopeful. I am hopeful that, God willing, our future children will have a better experience in this country than you did. You know? That your, than our than, than our nephews and our nieces. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that is my hope. And that's what I want to teach them. And that is, the, that is the gospel that we're committed to teaching and sharing when it comes to racial tension and racial injustices in America. Yeah. And so long as we keep God's word as the foundation and we do what it says, as James says, not only to just be hearers of the word, but to be doers yeah. of the word. I believe that we will be in better shape to really change because there's a lot of organizations out there that are doing good work. But what separates or what should separate the church is that we have the light. Yeah. Yeah. And so it goes beyond just good deeds, but it's okay. The gospel in its totality. Mm -hmm. Not only do I want to see justice served, but I want the oppressors to come to know who Christ is too. Mm hmm. And seeing the one that they are pressing in the image of the one who created them. Yeah. See, salvation and restoration cannot only be for the oppressed, mm-hmm. but it has to be for the oppressor as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And this is a part of the gospel that sometimes we try to neglect overlook. Mm-hmm. and overlook. Mm-hmm. Jesus came and died for all. Right. Not only for the oppressed but also for the oppressor. Mm -hmm. And if I'm honest, I've struggled in this. And because when I think about structures, when I think about organizations that and the systemic racism and things that take place and all of these things, it's challenging sometimes to pray for those people. Mm -hmm. But when I look at those people, not through June's lens, but through the lens of Jesus, I look at them and say, you know what? They need him too. Mm -hmm. There was a guy named Saul. He needed him too. Yeah. He needed him too. Mm -hmm. And he goes on to write two thirds of the New Testament. And so if God can do it with him, he can do it with the oppressors. Yeah. And so our prayer has to change, not only for the oppressed, but also for the oppressor that they might come to know who Christ is. Yeah. Yeah. And along the line of social justice and social unrest, We had a presidential election where we were able to also see the division amongst so many people. Yeah. Whether you lean to the right, the left, the middle, the middle, you didn't lead. You don't vote. It's okay. It's okay. It was a crazy (laughs) year. And, you know, I won't get into too much of that. We have uh, previous episodes, our post-election thoughts, as well as our thoughts on what biblical justice is. And so if you haven't listened to those episodes already, go ahead and do so. Uh, but this year we were able to see, you know, so much, so much division. And, you know, I think one thing we also need to be reminded of is just because someone thinks differently than you doesn't mean that person isn't a good person. Um, 
also you can have differences without being divisive. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those are some of the things that we learned this year. Yeah, I think there's, uh, you know, at least it's like the main lessons that we learn other lessons throughout the way. Absolutely. Um, And one of that is that we actually made it out of 2020. Yes. (laughs) We're blessed. Yes. We're blessed. We are blessed. And um, if you didn't think you could overcome anything, you're still here if you're listening to this. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe your goals that you wanted to achieve weren't met. Yeah, you weren't able to check everything off your 2020 resolution list or goal list. And that is okay. There's going to be setbacks. And understand, give yourself grace because we are still in a global (laughs) pandemic. (laughs) They're going to be reading about us in history books. But, you know, all jokes aside, you're still here. And that counts for something. Mm -hmm. You're not here by mistake. You're here for a purpose. And lastly, I think one of the things that we learned is to pivot (laughs) and it taught me that I need to be flexible Mm. that I need to be flexible that having goals and vision like write out you know written out plain you know to follow it that's awesome but then life happens (laughs) and that list and that checklist and that to-do list might not happen Um, were there things on my, you know, resolution list that I wasn't able to get accomplished just because, you know, we're navigating through so many different changes. Yeah, there wasn't. And I actually found that list yesterday and I was like, well, this is nice. (laughs) Um, but it's okay. You know what I mean? It's okay. Now looking into 2020, you know, we all love, you know, a new clean slate, quote unquote, you know, new chapter, you know, begin to think of what those things are going to be for you. But Allow yourself the grace and be flexible, be bendable, you know, to the things that may just happen in life that will require you to pivot and redirect yourself um, because it will most likely happen. (laughs) Yeah. And you don't have to wait for the clock to strike midnight to write down short term and long term goals. You can do that right now. And if there's some setbacks, if it doesn't go exactly as you plan, like you said, be flexible and, you know, pivot sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, I saw I've seen so many people do things that they normally would not have done if this year had not gone the way that it's gone. Yeah. So you have to see the good in 2020 as well. Perspective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perspective. Do you see the glass half empty or do you see the glass half full and how you perceive things? And I hope that you all were blessed. I hope that you all gained something from this. I would encourage you, take some time. Take about five minutes after here, five, ten minutes. And, you know, write down some of the great things that have happened this year. It's easy to critique. It's easy to say all the bad. But it takes a visionary to see the good that has happened. And so make sure that you subscribe, that you share with a friend. Thank you again for listening. Take care. God bless and much much love. love.